Silently, beneath centuries-old trees in Manila's San Miguel District, the Lagarda House stands on 315 San Rafael Street. It has been witness to countless moments of history, of upheavals and change. Its facade has attended the rise of leaders and statesmen, as well as the decline of unwanted regimes. Built in 1937, it is one of Manila's first Art Deco houses. Reminiscent of the period's elegance and sophistication, its clean lines are the hallmarks of geometry and simplicity that celebrate the rise of commerce and technology. A step into the foyer is a step back in time. It was in this house that Don Alejandro Rosas Legarda and his wife Doña Ramona or Tita Munin raised a brood of four. It was in the kitchen of this house where the delicate aromas of Tita Munin's early Epicurean concoctions first wafted through. Suzette Legarda Montinola, a third generation Legarda, has lovingly converted the house into a museum and its dining room into a fine dining venue. It is now La Cucina de Tita Muning. Well, actually, I don't think it was really a decision. I think it kind of just happened. I got the chance to see the way that my grandparents lived and how life was back then. One of the wishes of my grandfather on his deathbed was not to sell the house. So, so far, we have managed to keep the house in the family. The house, as a museum, is where family heirlooms, priceless antiques, and paintings greet every charmed visitor. Each item is rife with Lagarda history and is a reminder of Manila's gentle past, often too forgotten as the city tries to keep pace with its mundane rat race. Calling quiet attention to itself is a young woman's portrait that hangs on the living room wall. Closer inspection bears the signature of national artist Felix Resurrection Hidalgo and the date, 1901. Believed to be a painting of Hidalgo's mistress in France and entitled La Innocentia, she enthralls visitors and draws them further into the house's old world charm. Souvenirs from trips abroad are illuminated by a large window while photos from past parties decorate the wall. One room appears to have been set aside for little girls' dreams. Occupying the dressing room are ballet costumes and other gowns of the female gardens. Bric-a-brac line the antique dresser. Don Alejandro was a doctor, and as was a practice then, a portion of the house and an entrance were set aside for his clinic. Floor-to-ceiling shelves line the library walls, filled with Dr. Legarda's medical books and encyclopedias. The more ancient Spanish and English tomes bear handwritten labels, while relatively recent art pieces occupy some upper shelves. A founding member of the Camera Club of the Philippines, Don Alejandro's collection of antique cameras and photography equipment are also on display. The pieces form a respectable collection and the photos taken using them are found throughout the house. More evidence of Don Alejandro's productive life are found on the second floor, where Plateras share a room with antique radio communications equipment. Alejandro Rosas Legarda, the doctor and photo hobbyist, was also an avid member of the Philippine Amateur Radio Association. But while most of the rooms are dedicated to Don Alejandro's interests, the dining room and kitchen were Tita Muning's domain. Tita Muning excelled in throwing unforgettable dinners that involved her skills in the kitchen and her particular eye for detail. When she married into the family, she said she didn't really know how to cook. And so it became like a challenge for her to excel at, you know, cooking and throwing parties. Certain to be conversation pieces in such parties are part of a collection of blue mason plates. Originally custom made for banquets of as many as 40 people, no two plates in the entire set 
bear the same design, which are hand-painted and lined with gold. Other turn-of-the-century china, flatware, and silverware share table space with Murano birds that Tita Muning bought on her first trip to Italy. Fresh ferns and other garden picks adorn heirloom handmade lace. All pieces set the stage for guests to sample the recipes that made Tita Muning legendary among the Lagardas and their vast circle of friends. Like our family would say, no, Tita Muning had the best paella, or Tita Muning had the best lengua. That was how it was legendary. It's Spanish-Filipino, they're mostly Spanish dishes um, that are Filipinized, like the paella, the lengua cooked in white wine, um, the relleno. Um, we have a bacalao also, which is basically a Spanish dish, but they're all, they're all my grandmother's interpretation of these dishes. The soup and salad are still talked about by family and friends. The bread pudding is a Lagarda original that is bound to live on in every guest's memory. The food is excellent. The food is really, really good. It's, um, it's lutong bahay. It's like the, the specialty of the house, like what you had in your Lala's house. And the place adds to the experience of the food. 